Hello guys, Survival Tech Nord here. There's been a lot of talk about the Gotenna product being a useful device for the survival or incomes community. We're going to talk about that today. Now, if you're hoping that I'm going to blast this product, you're going to be sadly disappointed. I'm simply trying to alleviate much of the confusion that's going around. So my goal with this video is to understand whether or not the Gotenna is of any value to the survival or income communities. And with that, let's get started. So the first question is, what actually is a Gotenna? A Gotenna is a very cleverly packaged MERS radio. It has some very clever software running on a microprocessor and a Bluetooth interface which allows your mobile phone or tablet to act as a user interface or remote control for the Gotenna device. So what is MERS? MERS stands for Multi-Use Radio Service. MERS was established as an unlicensed radio service by the FCC in the year 2000. It's similar to FRS or CB radio, but it's limited to 2 watts. It was also meant to be implemented in Canada, but those plans were cancelled. Therefore, MERS and the Gotenna can only legally be sold in the United States. Well, what's about the effective range of the Gotenna? Well, I can honestly say the Gotenna will work much better than the bubble wrap radios, FRS radios or PMR radios you find in Walmart. The simple truth is 2 watts through an inefficient antenna on a VHF band is not going to get much range in almost any event. And here lies one of the first problem with the Gotenna operating on the MERS frequencies. It's still not a deal breaker. Moving on. Is it possible to increase the range of the Gotenna? The best way to increase the range is to get line of sight with the person or group you want to communicate with. There is no mechanical way to improve the antenna performance and range of the Gotenna. However, the example on the left shows you the best case scenario for achieving maximum range with a Gotenna. Can service to my Gotenna be shut down remotely? No, not like cellular phones and mobile phones. As long as your device has power and you're in range of the group, user, or your private network which you want to communicate with, no one can turn off or disable your Gotenna. However, anyone with a surplus public service radio, a Biofang UV5R, or any other radio which can broadcast high power on MERS frequencies can block your Gotenna they can jam your communications entirely. Now that might be a deal breaker. Still, let's move on. So what are some use case examples for the Gotenna? I think realistically, if family or friends visiting Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, Magic Mountain, a parade, a protest, a sit-in, concert, where the family or group would want to maintain data communications, in the form of text messaging as well as location services being able to see your group on a map. Then I could see the usefulness of this device. But using it for critical communications or in a life-threatening situation? I really don't see it, guys. There are some practical issues that come up. The Gotenna is only useful if the group using it is restricted or localized within the effective range of the device. And that's okay if you're at a parade or a flea market or in a shopping mall, for example. But we can't rely on this for any type of long-range communications. That simply wouldn't be realistic. I don't want to sound like I'm blasting this product because actually I like it very much. But uh, I honestly believe that the company has all the best intentions. With that said, if the company can find other revenue streams like IMCOMs or survival communications, it can reduce the price and sell more of them. This is certainly a good thing for the company. But I'm not yet convinced that this is the right product for the survival community. Let's take a look at some of the colorful marketing language used on the website and in their videos. No service, no problem. Turn your mobile phone into a 
off-grid communication tool. Certainly this is true, but there's still the problem of the limited range and limited output power of the device. In regards to location sharing, sharing locations is dependent on the built-in GPS of your smartphone or tablet. The GoTenna by itself doesn't provide these services. As with many GPS devices, you'll need a clear line of sight to the sky before you can save the current location or share your location with someone else. So this doesn't work in a building, guys. More colorful marketing. It works anywhere on the planet. Well, that's absolutely true. However, it's only legal to use unlicensed in the United States. There's no other country on the planet which allows unlicensed use of the MERS frequencies. A rugged design for off-grid adventure. Right. This may very well be true, however, if they're going to use rugged and adventure in the same sentence, then they should probably publish an IPX rating for their product. The whole point of IPX ratings are there to protect the consumer by identifying the device as a certain level of waterproof or dustproofness. Without an IPX rating, the words rugged and adventure are nothing more than marketing talk and can't be taken seriously by the consumer. You'll have to put your boots on for this colorful marketing, guys. How Gotenna extends RF to the mainstream and adds to every ham's tool belt. This article really made me sad because it shows to what lengths their marketing department will go to provide misinformation for the purpose of selling their product. The author of the article, in an effort to get support from other amateur radio operators, but he was licensed in September of 2014, 12 days before this article was written, and I suspect he was only licensed as a technician to add credibility to the documentation and articles written in their blog and on their website. In fact, he goes on to say how the Goten is better in many respects than amateur radio. That's fair enough, so let's keep it real. These are the main problems with the Gotenna. It's got low power, no external antenna, short range, it only works in MERS frequency, can't change the channel, no voice communications, and it won't work with old Android or iOS devices. I'd still like a pair though. But not to replace or augment my amateur radio, but simply because they're cool and fun. Final thoughts. When I started making this video, I did so or started doing so with the hopes of answering lots of questions about the product, a product which I actually believe in. Now, although for the last few minutes I've been very hard on this product, all I want to do is keep them honest because I believe they have a brilliant product, but the product is a victim of their own marketing crap. The Gotenna is nothing more than a walkie-talkie that interacts with your smartphone. Sure, it's encrypted and uh, comms are secure, but it's a really cool toy. The type of toy that I would see in sharper image. The type of toy that I would certainly buy. But the questions we want to answer here are, is this of any value to the survival community or to the incomes community? And my answer is absolutely not. And it doesn't have to be because it's very good at what it was initially designed for. If the company gets rid of the marketing people who are putting out all this blatant brouhaha, they'll probably have hundreds of thousands of happy customers. Make a European version and I'll certainly be one of them. Uh, finally guys, I can say this. The Gotenna can augment your comms equipment, but it can't replace it. In the end, the Gotenna has some very cool features, but it's still just a MERS radio. Alright guys, that's it. If you found this video entertaining or informative, please give me a thumbs up. It wasn't easy making this video because I really, really love that product. But it's important to let people know what it is that they're getting and not just rely on marketing crap. Rock and roll guys, thanks for watching. Ciao.